We've recently been hitting a pretty interesting point with Fallout 4 mods as of late. We're kind of in the wake and the follow-up to all of that mod pack collection controversy with a ton of people deleting their mods from Nexus. But at the same time, we've seen from upcoming videos, there are some massive things on the horizon. And in this interim, we've seen a ton of really solid, interesting, and unique mods to come out for Fallout 4. Things have slowed down a bit, which is always an interesting time because it allows you to find some gems out there that you may have otherwise overlooked. And in this one, I'm showing you some really incredible mods, including one mod that is actually going to probably be in my top five weapon mods of just all time for this game. So with that said, here's a bundle of about eight or so recently released mods for Fallout 4 that I think are going to interest you. And even for some of you, we're approaching into the scary of things. Not quite October yet, but we have a few mods like that on this list. Although before we get too much into that, I do want to tell you a bit about today's video sponsor, Mecarina. Mecarina for me at least is one of the first mobile games to truly capture the magic of playing on a PC or console as a team-based 5v5 shooter because at its core Mecarina actually cares about balance whether it's just a casual pick up and play for a few minutes or even if you want to get sweaty try hard and optimize your build for some competitive PvP combat at its core Mecarina offers dozens of different mechs to unlock and then from there you can fully customize them with their own skins weapons and more this creates all kinds of unique combinations different mechs with different special abilities, and of course, strengths and weaknesses of different mechs that over time you'll learn to exploit and abuse. And as you start to get attached to one mech or another, there's even a ton of achievements to track your progress and give you some rewards. And there really is something special about using a mech in a game and just completely dominating everyone else, actually mastering your abilities on that specific mech. Unfortunately, you get in pretty early, as Mecharina just launched globally. And as a result, right now, there's a huge celebration in-game with loads of awesome events, and you can get daily well welcome rewards during your first week of play. Mecarina is completely free to play on both Android and iOS right now. You could use my personal link or the QR code right here to get the Steel Reaper skin, 508 coins, and 70,000 credits. And if you're quick, you could actually add me to your friends list and we could play some matches together. Either way, looking back at the mods, the first one I do want to show you is a really awesome weapon mod, and that is the Winchester Model 1873 the Lever Action Rifle. I feel like Lever Action Rifles are just one of those things in Fall out games that they feel right. They synergize so well with the gunplay and gameplay in particular with Fallout 4 and just so incredibly satisfying to use. With this particular weapon mod, it has a few different customization options, a few different skins you could apply, the basics you've come to expect with weapon mods now. But where this one is truly going to shine is when you are actually using it and it is extremely satisfying. It's the animations and sounds of it coming together to create a quite pleasant experience overall. Thankfully, we're also now at a point with Fallout 4 modding where it doesn't actually have to reload all of the bullets on a reload animation. You just reload the shots you have fired. You can cancel the reload if you have the right dependency mods. And overall, it's not like it does anything crazy pushing weapon mods forward, but it looks great. It's super satisfying to use. And again, I feel like this is really peak Fallout 4 weapons, taking down enemies one by one from afar and even giving you some New Vegas vibes along the way. And although the Winchester Model 1873 does feel supremely Fallout, even if it really has hasn't appeared technically in a previous Fallout game. Another weapon that feels even more Fallout and also technically has never appeared in a Fallout game because it's completely unique is the Zap Gun. And this has to be one of the coolest weapon mods we've gotten in a long time and easily in my top five favorites ever. As in effect, what it's going to be is almost a thrown together looking handmade-esque laser weapon base for Fallout 4. And that laser weapon base is very true here as this is one of those items that is going to fully embrace the weapon custom customization system of Fallout 4. You can turn this into all kinds of different things, snipers, assault rifles, flamers, and there's even a unique grenade launcher-esque option you can find. Not to mention, as you can see in the background, it looks absolutely amazing. The design of this one, as well as the differences you get from those different customization options, come together to make it really look, one, extremely Fallout, like something that should appear in these games, but at the same time, it also just looks really cool in its own right. Also, when you're actually firing this one, visual effects it gives off are really stunning, like more so than many of the other web mods out there right now. This one really took me back a few times when I was using some of the different variants and looking at those particle effects from the beams you were firing. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of customization options. And one of the cool parts is you make it really feel quite different. Depending on which attachments you choose to apply or remove, you really have a different weapon of sorts. They have completely different identities. Whether you're changing the ammo type to be a 
full-fledged fusion core and have a massive ammo capacity, but of course a completely different ammo type, or even something like a sniper versus a fully automatic flamethrower. This is also implemented into the level list. You'll start seeing these pop up with enemies, and I'd always describe this one as a laser pipe gun. It definitely feels like it should occupy the earlier aspects of the game, but you definitely can get powerful versions of this, including the unique variant with some unique effects and just unique visuals. It's a pleasure to use, and a little cherry on top is it also actually adds in some turrets to place down at your settlements, making it all around just a really easy to justify an awesome download. So now you got a couple of new weapons, you may actually want some things to do with them, and for that we do have the Wilderness. This is one of those mods that I almost don't even want to share that much about because it's such a cool and unique experience to actually play for the first time for yourself. As an effect, what this is going to add in is a Wilderness section for Fallout 4, a new world space for you to travel to, and once you're here, you're kind of just out in this vast wilderness with all kinds of different creatures spawning here, tons of foliage, and of course, things to find and do. As this place does have some quite horrifying and spooky secrets and quests for you to complete, but it's not as hands-on as traditional Fallout 4 quests. You're going to be going around and finding clues or finding notes that will lead you in certain directions. And then you'll have larger things happen, and again, I don't want to spoil it. It's a really cool one. I think one that would be quite a bit of fun on survival or even with a camping mod, there's a ton of things to find and explore, and it has some pretty cool mix-ups even when it comes to things like maps or the gameplay loop overall. It's really a blast and a great experience that I think everyone should give a try at least once. But then just another pretty cool one to add to Fallout 4 and have in the background is Fall Evil Hunter. As in effect, what this is going to do is add the Hunter from the Resident Evil series into Fallout 4 with a few different variants that can spawn. I mean, honestly, it's kind of that simple. You'll just start finding these creatures in the world. The creature design itself looks terrifying. From a lore-friendly perspective, it isn't strictly lore-friendly, but if you're not super familiar with the Resident Evil series, based off visuals alone, I feel like this one doesn't even look that out of place in Fallout. It definitely does somewhat fit in in the post-apocalyptic world. And it's just a horrifying enemy you could stumble upon that's a moderately tough fight and almost resembles a Deathclaw, and it even does have a Deathclaw replacer. If you want to go that route, it is completely optional. There aren't a ton of enemy mods for Fallout 4, so having one more one to add into your load order, or even if you just want to use this one on its own, can make a pretty terrifying surprise encounter every once in a while when you stumble upon one of these guys. And that's sort of unofficial theme of this video, is kind of making Fallout 4 the best version of itself. A lot of lore-friendly mods, even if they're not strictly lore-appropriate. And with that in mind, we do have another Pine Forest mod. And for me, this is a mod that represents just how I feel like Fallout 4's Commonwealth should probably look, or to me, it just kind of feels the most appropriate, given the time frame, given the location in Boston. As you can imagine, like similar mods out there, what this is going to do is add in a ton of pine trees and aspen trees all over the Commonwealth. And this provides a massive change to the landscape. Visually, you will just not be able to see as far because there are thick layers of trees in some places. But also, and this is going to be pretty subjective, but I think this looks amazing. I think, again, this is the way the Commonwealth really should look. It's my favorite type of mod to use when it comes to environmental mods. And a few of the pros of this one over the others. One, I just think the trees overall look really good. It's not actually going to break any pre-combines. LOD files are included. And even further, this mod author has actually taken quite a bit of attention to make sure there's not any intersecting trees with the environment or world overall. Mods like this are going to be super subjective. It's what you like. But here's a very new option that I actually am a huge fan of. And it's going to be one you're going to be seeing in the background for quite a while. It has definitely been my favorite out of the last few and even some of the older options out there. But then for another weapon that just feels straight out of Fallout, we also do have the Heavy Select Shotgun. The design of this one literally looks like something Bethesda would add to Fallout 76, and they almost kind of did just recently, as this will be a single action giant heavy shotgun that you will have in Fallout 4, most appropriate for use in power armor. This thing is a blast to use and really balanced as being a powerful kind of mid to late game option. There's all kinds of different ammo types you could use, whether it be railway spikes, nails, or just typical shotgun shells or slugs. It has pretty awesome animations. I think the animations of this one are pretty satisfying overall, and it's really fun. It feels like a lore-friendly weapon, a cool one to add to the game, have it implemented into the world for you to find, and whether you want to use it for yourself or with an NPC, it feels right at home in Fallout 4, and actually I think occupies a pretty cool spot in the level list overall. We don't have too many heavy weapon mods for this game by default, and in particular, there's not many heavy shotgun options out there. 
there. But okay, now you have this big, scary, and cool looking shotgun. You probably want some things to actually use it against. And next up, we have two pretty awesome mods that will definitely make the game a bit scarier. First up, we do have Monsterum, which is going to be a Deathloss sound rework. And naturally, with it being a sound rework, you should probably listen to what it does. So overall, I think this is a pretty cool one. I feel like it almost gives you horror slash dinosaur vibes in a sense to the Deathclaw. It makes it sound more creature-esque. It definitely has deeper and more menacing tones. And in particular, when you have that initial roar from the Deathclaw, it almost feels like a King of the Jungle roar of sorts. And overall, I think it's a pretty cool one. On two fronts, I feel like these sounds are much more menacing in general, playing on a harder difficulty where a Deathclaw is a true threat. And then hearing these sounds as it's running after you is just completely terrifying, but also we've played Fallout 4 for five years. Having some novelty around these sounds on these creatures is always a good one. And I feel like these sounds do feel lore friendly enough that it does feel appropriate in the game. And as such, from the same mod author in an extremely similar vein, we also do have Ferals, which as you could imagine is a Feral Ghoul sound rework. And really, I like this one for a lot of the same reasons. To me, this one really does sound more true to what a ghoul was in Fallout. It's not quite as different as Monsterum, but still is different enough. And I feel like in particular, the death sounds for the ghouls do actually sound a lot more notable. They stand out more with this mod and if anything, almost makes it feel more impactful. But overall, there's new eight new mods that will hopefully be true to the Fallout experience enough for most of you, but at the same time being vast improvements on the game and adding in all kinds of new features, quests, or things to do. As always, again, I hope you guys found this one enjoyable or interesting. Hopefully, you'll give some of these mods a download, which you can find them linked down below in the description. But that said, as always, again, I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.